Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you're from. This is the Mantis Garden, and I'm Simon. And today it's going to be a pretty long one uh, because we're going to do a semi ice bug tour. So instead of this side, we're going to be doing that side of the room, and we're going to go through around 25 species of isopod. I'm going to check them, make sure they're not too wet, not too dry. I'm going to check they've got enough food. And these are just the breeders that I'm going to do today. So you might want to press pause on the video. Go make yourself a nice cup of Earl Grey. Sit back and watch. We're going to start with three common species uh, in the hobby. If it was up to my wife, I'd have to start with A. But we sort of are doing this is Armadillidium plugii. And here I have a Montenegro, a Slano, and a Dubrovnik. So that's three of the guys. And all I do is when I take them down, let's move this over a little bit. Oh, so I can get all three of them in there. And what I do generally is just I'll give the mouse a feel with the back of my hand. And that's a little dry. Now, these guys don't really care. They're pretty cool for that. I'm going to give this a nice spritz. As you see, I'm only spritzing the moss. Is spritz an actual word? No idea. Anyway, I'm spritzing the moss, so we, we've got a little bit of humidity here. The lids are drilled and meshed out, so we don't get any things like fungus gnats. If you know what it stuff's at the top of, it's not covered in flies or anything like that. So that's what we have for lids for these guys. These are a, a pretty good starter piece species because they don't uh, they don't require a lot of attention to be honest. They don't mind if it's if it gets a bit too wet or it gets a bit too dry. They're quite quite reasonable. They're not very picky and uh, yeah, they're, they're a really good ice spot to have. These are all three breeding boxes, and there's, I think, 25 in each one of these. Uh, these are not the, the boxes we use for sales. So we've got 25 in these starter boxes. Oh, it was 25. There might be more now, but they do take quite a while to get going, I've noticed. And uh, they're also invisible, evidently. There's one. Yep, there's some. Oh! I see one in the wrong box there, which obviously doing this, they must have fallen in, so he's just run off. I'll fix that later. But these are, where's my camera? There it is. Let's see if I can get a focus on these guys. And these are wonderful. Obviously everybody knows them as clowns. This is the Armadillidin Clugiae Montenegro. That one isn't. <laughs> but never mind, I'll sort that out. Right, as I was saying, we uh, we just dampen this moss and just give it a little spray. I'm going to do this about once a week, maybe. Um, if I get time, sometimes I'll just get them down and, and just check them anyway. As for food, I do not feed them wet food. I do not give them uh, cucumber. I do not give them uh, sweet potato. I do not give them all the other things that they suggest <clears throat> and that I see on other videos and other people's um, <sighs> sites and Facebook and everywhere else. It's not required. Um, this is required. Uh, for all species, and this is uh, calcium. This one is actually um, calcium rock, which is limestone rock that's been broken up. And there's also uh, some cut full fish bone in there that's been um, powdered and sprinkled onto it. They do like oak leaves very much, and they like birch leaves and many other hardwood leaves that are good for them. This is what we want. This is what they eat, as you can see, they have holes uh, because of the, look at that, that's a skeleton. And that is because these guys like it. I also give them a lichen stick and they're gonna need a new one. They've eaten all the lichen off this stick because they love it. This side, by the way, is uh, 
really dry. Really dry. This is nice and damp. This is really dry. Now I've noticed with uh, Clue Guy, they tend to stay up on the dry side of things rather than the damp. But the damp is there. They still need the humidity in the air. But they do seem to prefer the dry side much towards the wet. And much to my disappointment, they are still not giving me any babies, which are called Mankai. Um, well, actually, they're called Manka if it's one, and Mankai if it's multiple for isopods. But no deaths and no babies. And lots and lots of springtails by the looks of things. And that's in the Montenegro. So this one was Slano, which is slightly different, but not much. Oh, there's one molting. Let me see if I can get a decent. Come on, focus. There we go. That was molted. And what happens with ice pods is they actually molt in two halves. So the backside comes off first. And then the front end comes off. As you see, these are slightly different. There's no yellow on these. These are all white spots. So, yeah. And I don't have... My focus has gone on the box now. Um, I don't have any manka, mankai in here either, by the looks of things. So they, they do take quite a while to get going. This is also something else that they need which is uh, these bits and pieces here. This is a rotten wood. And I get it and I soak it and eventually it comes to a point where I can just crumble it into, uh, into the box. And they seem to love it. Oh, there's tons under there. But no babies. Still going to call them babies. And these guys have eaten all the like on the stick as well. So I have to go shopping in my local woodlands for some um, lichen bark. Now, when I put the lids back on, I'm going to put the uh, ventilated side, not where the moss is. These are lockable, which is pretty cool. Stop them getting out and mixing the others. So I'm going to put the lids on these now. And when I put them on the shelf, I will put them so the moss side is facing outwards towards the light, which keeps my moss green. So a quick look at these uh, these guys. This was uh, Dubrovnik. That was it, Dubrovnik. And these things that grow in here, I actually tried them on. I had some uh, sticks, rabbit food sticks, that I was giving like treats that I give to my uh, roaches. And I sprinkled a few in here to see what they like. And the seeds out of them actually started growing. So that's what that is. Uh, and look what that is. There. That is an orange lavis. I'm going to leave it in there for now. But I will take that out eventually. These guys are again not much different. Uh, let me see if I can pick him up. No, he doesn't want to. He's buggered off. Is there any under this one? There is. Now there's loads in here, but I have noticed for these guys, they tend to be in under the moss, in the damp side, which is weird because generally the same species, same genera, um, they're just a different morph. But anyway, they're in here, and some are buried, and uh, still... No man can here, so we we'll have to wait for those. Let's move on to the next one. If you're just starting out and you don't want to spend too much money on ice spots, but you still want a pretty one, then these are the guys I suggest you go for. These are really easy to keep. And this is Armadillidium maculatum, commonly known as the zebra. As you can see, why they're called a zebra. But these guys are very prolific. And will go absolutely insane. And they're all over the stick. As you see, they're everywhere. These guys again, all isopods. I'm going to use the same thing, uh, which is 
leaf litter and rotting wood they've got tons of rotting wood in here bits bits of uh, white wood like this which is if you squeeze it it'll fall apart and that is perfect cooking for isopods you see this piece here where is it where's my finger i can just literally squash this up and they absolutely love it so they don't really need the leaves at the moment um i haven't got any i go to the woods every thursday and i collect them leaf litter and rotting wood and lichen etc so i haven't got any right now because it is wednesday so i shall be going tomorrow and topping them up so i'll have to get all these out again but i'll just chuck a load of leaves in and that's it and a lichen stick these are extremely prolific as i said and they wherever they are there's always mankai which is awesome the only problem i find with them is they can get out of anything they are houdini isopods and i seem to find a lot of them in other other enclosures other boxes and if you get too many of them in another box, it can be a problem because they will eat everything and they will take over. So be very careful about that if you have several, especially if you've got them stacked. Because the tiny man guy get out and squeeze himself into all the boxes somehow. I do not know how. He's a lockable. And every box has got a really, really tiny mesh on it. But they still manage to get out. Again... Not so much ventilation, just one row of holes. You don't need to go crazy. If you go crazy, you're going to dry it up. This is already fairly dry. This is fairly damp. If we go any more with the water, like putting the, the bottle type uh, spray in here, what we're going to get is mold. And that's not good for all insects and crustaceans and arthropods in general. Um, fungus is not bad, they eat fungus, but when you start getting uh, mold spores, it creates what they call a fungal infection, which confuses everybody because they think fungus is bad then. If you see furry stuff growing on food, that is not bad uh, mold, that is not bad fungus that's growing on there, that is actually just natural, which will you would see if that was outside, uh, it's not a big deal. But uh, if you start getting black mold or white powder mold, that can cause fungal infections and then your creatures die, which is not good. And this goes for all arthropods. This goes for mantis and stick insects suffer from it really badly, especially on the legs. Uh, so yeah, avoid that. And the best way to avoid that is by looking at them more frequently Paying attention to how much water you're giving them. Just spray the top here on one side. Do not, do not soak them. You will definitely get mould. You, uh, The soil will go anaerobic underneath. All sorts of nasty things happen. And again, your pets will die. So mine are all nice and healthy, nice and happy. There's the dry side. They always seem to stay in the dry side. They want humidity in the air. It's not about a pool of water. They want humidity in the air. And that's exactly what they get with a little spray on there if you don't have a billion holes or a massive, massive ventilation box. So, who's up next? This is by far one of the prettiest isopods on the market. And for me, much better than rubber duckies. And there goes the microphone. Doesn't matter, I have several on. All right. This is Marulanella Red Diablo. Now, it should be Marulanella SP, you may see, which means species, of course. And uh, the reason why it's just SP is because we don't have a name for them yet. There is no real uh, definition for them. And these guys, they appear to love this uh, oak leaves. That's what I find. And they're loving the wood as well. Now, I wish I could show you this. Maybe I can. Maybe I can't. But that little thing running around there is a mankai. There are loads of them in here. I mean, literally loads of them. They uh, had babies, let's call them, last week. And they had them again this week. So, all good. 
got lots of these now I'm going to pick one of these up now and show you and I'm going to go out of focus for a second and here we go look how pretty they are the three colors are red yellow and black I think there was a manco in there as well well manco there's only one there he is yeah little tiny one but yes these are these are quite a beautiful answer board um they don't appear to care about the lights, unlike a lot of ice spots. They don't... Oops, there's one gone. Um, they don't appear to care about anything, really. They're quite happy to stay out and on the top all the time and in and, and, and focus. Uh, it should be nice. <laughs> like, we'll get rid of that now. And we'll show them on my hand. It's easier to move that around. But how's that for pretty? They really, really are uh, a very... Very cool ice pod. And these was actually a gift they came in a mystery box um, from Nicole Louise. I shall put the information in the well, I think it's already there actually in the descriptions of my videos. Um, check her out. She, she has uh, all sorts of very, very interesting species. Let me just get this focus in. That's better. Um, Loads of interesting species, and, and then every week she seems to get a new one, or two, or three. And there are always some fun, uh, different coloured sort of species going on there. But these are by far one of my favourites. And this is reasonably, I can feel water on this moss. I can feel that, that, that it's damp. It's like when, when you sit on grass in summer and it feels bit weird when you sit on it through your jeans. That's how that moss feels. That's the best description I can come up with for that moss. So I'm going to give that a spray so it's, it's wet to the touch. But not soaked. Oh my god, not soaked. I can't tell me and express how much uh, I can say do not soak it. Now there's loads of mankind in it so I don't want to disturb them. They're all buried in there. Uh, I want to get this one back on the shelf as soon as possible. But these guys are going to need some more leaf litter tomorrow, which they shall get, as there are more of them in there. Now, this species, I'm going to give uh, a little bit of really finely ground fish flakes. Just get fish flakes, rub it in your fingers so it, it turns into dust, and I'm going to sprinkle it all around. Um, and again, I'll do that tomorrow when I do the leaf litter, because really, really, at this point, I just wanted to talk about the isopods rather than um, how to look after them, how to care for them. I hope I'm giving information as well at the same time. But that was my main aim here, is just to show some of the isopods that we have. God, there's loads in there. Um, and yeah, that's, that's what I'm going to do. The little fish flakes there for the manga. And they will munch on that quite happily. And it's possibly too small for the adults to come and vacuum up. So the manga will, will get something at least. Uh, and hopefully grow up quick to be nice and strong and I can start swapping them with people for other interesting species so if you're interested in these and you want to swap isopods uh, yeah drop me a, drop me a message in the in the comments below and we'll uh, see what we can do in the future when these little little mankai grow up right uh, I don't know what we've got next Oh, we'll go for, uh, yes, we'll go for those. Right, okay. These guys are super easy to keep, but they do like to burrow. And this is Armadillidium versicolor, which are quite a small isopod. So I'm going to struggle getting a focus. Let's have a go. Well, the camera really didn't want to focus on these guys. They are quite pretty, but as you see, they're, they're quite small. Now, there's quite a lot of them in here. I think there's 40 in this one or so. But as I say, they burrow and hide a lot. So you don't see much of them. So I wouldn't suggest they're a good uh, display isopod by far in a terrarium. I'd probably go for the Red Diablos, if anything. Uh, and maybe one of the others that are coming up very soon. Uh, these guys again... As you see, I give them oak leaves. And I give them tons of wood. They, these guys seem to love... Uh, let's get my focus back where it should be. These guys seem to love the, the wood. And their lichen, which there's tons of in here. This this one I got too wet, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. 
and I ended up needing to put another row of uh, holes in the lid because I was getting a bit of mould and I didn't like it. Well, sort of mould. Oh, that one's a very pretty one, it's very yellow. Shame you can't see it, hard look. <laughs> but again, I'm not sure whether I have Mankai for these because these are a fairly new addition. So this is rotting wood down here, let's move that, I don't worry I'm not poking that or anything, I'm not like sticking it in her head. Um, yeah they're all they're all buried or they're under the moss, but the moss is still quite damp as I said I had problems with this, I, I over watered it uh, like a fool and uh, needed to leave the lid off for quite a while so just to just to dry out a little bit, this, this isn't, this isn't soaking wet, this at least, but ah, I left it a bit too much in there. But again, they've got uh, loads of wood. They like lichen. They, they really, really like the wood. Um, you know, I find that with this this particular species, they prefer that to fish flakes. So that's pretty unusual for something for an isopod because everything likes fish flakes. You'll find in an arthropod world, or uh, anything that links uh, vegetation will link fish flakes. Because they just love them. And also uh, goldfish uh, pond pellets they also like. So everything again that eats vegetation will that can will eat uh, pond pellets. And this includes like beetles and whatnot. Uh, stick insects you have trouble with because they, they're a bit thick. And they just go straight for leaves and that's it. So oh leaves yeah. But everything else is a bit wonky on them. Uh, sorry, I'm just watching a mantis now at the moment, staring at another mantis, and it just made me laugh. Right, so, I think what we're doing next... Gotcha. This is one of my all-time favourites uh, of ice pods. They're very cheap, they're very pretty, they're very prolific. All the things you want in an isopod. Now, on this one, because it's in the middle of the shelf, it has a temperature and humidity gauge to give me an idea of what's going on in here and once I've got that I've got a pretty good idea what's going on with the rest of them especially for temperature to be honest and these are Armadillidium uh, granulatum which are very 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 pretty I love them to bits there's obviously more than 20 in here now there was 20 these take a while to get going but when they get going as you can see <laughs> they get gone there's quite a lot of them in there. And we get the, I, I think you probably call them roly-polies. We never have roly-polies where I live uh, when I was a child. So <laughs> the first Armadillidium I ever saw, I had to buy. Because we don't actually have them in the wild here. We have uh, several species, but just no Armadillidium. We're too far north, I think. And these are really, really pretty. I'm loving the, the yellow dotted area they've got that's awesome and they're quite a chunky isopod as well as you can see there look at this guy he's got me finger you try to roll up in my finger yeah and this is called congwa baiting uh basically rolling up in a ball let's get some so i can get a focus on there sort of can he's not gonna come out is he He's, no, he's not all for coming out. He's not all for coming out. He's just going to roll around in a bowl in my hand. Oh, maybe. And we've got some legs. But they are a really super pretty eye support. And I, I wish it'd come out because then you can see or get an idea of the size. Nope, doesn't want to. All right, fair enough. We'll put him back in and go back home. And they are Amblium maculatum. Uh, no, they're not. They're Amalidium. Amadolidium. Armadillidium granulatum, and there's tons of them. And as you see, what I've done here, we've got the, the damp side. These guys quite like the damp side, to be honest. Which I'm going to give, make a little more damp. That's it. That's it for spraying. Again, I don't want it mouldy in here. They love their leaves, they love their wood, and they also love this stuff, which again is calcium. This is uh, cuttlefish, I think, that one. And they do like... Well, they like it so much, it's gone. And look at that guy, an escapee. That is a, 
Presidio, that is a lava. I don't know what he's doing in there, but I'm going to take him out and put him in his, his, uh, his proper place. Again, lichen sticks, they've munched all the lichen off them. And they're starting to strip the bark as well now, which is awesome. Yeah. That's them. That's not how I was found. Uh, and these leaves are being munched away. A birch leaf, that one. So these guys are birch. Okay. But well, there's plenty in there until tomorrow. So they're not going to starve to death. And they should be fine. So this is another good one that if you're just starting out and you don't want to spend a lot of money, these are super cheap. I mean, really, really cheap. And you can start off a good colony of these. As long as you've got a bit of patience, if you've only got a few when you start, you'll need a bit of patience because they take months uh, to tackle in if you've only got a few. If you've got... Now, if you buy tons of them, it's fine. You'll, you'll be able to get on your way quite easy. So if you've got like 30 or 40 to start with, you get a good colony. We don't sell them if they go less than 40. So it's like 40 is the limit. Any less than that, we, 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 you know, we're not going to sell them. Uh, we, we like to keep the uh, a breeding pod like this, which is 25 ice pods, plus the selling box, which will have a minimum of 40 in it. And that keeps us going in a, in a full circle. So when we explode, we make one of these, which is 25s. And that's for the next time. It's like a, also it's like a, a little mini backup. So if you had a crash, for instance, in your main box, you've still got whatever you have in, in these little uh, pod boxes, these breeding boxes. So it's awesome. Let's see what's next. These are another pretty cool species. You sort of wander around the moss. I put more moss in here than normal. Uh, these look like... Uh, the Amazolidium vulgar that you find down south in England. Um, they're not much different, they're a bit smaller, I think, though. And these are Amazolidium vulgar St. Lucia, which just means they have some others with different colours on them. Um, oh, that's a red one, the Cumbler Bet. Oh, no, rolled into a ball. There we go, little red one. Quite cute. Uh, Vulgar's again, we've got, oh, we've got a lovely white one there, it's almost a, a magic potion sort of look it's got, as you've seen here, uh, pearl maybe, that's a lovely white one, maybe I have to isolate some of these at some point, but well, that's another video, uh, we've got a, a really quite a dry side, I put a, quite a lot of moss in here for some reason, I don't know why I put so much moss in here, uh, these, these hide quite a bit again, um, just wet this little bit on this side. I'll just let me get this. Oh, wrong way. Yep, that's it. Uh, we've just got this little bit of wood in here. You see there's one in the middle there, a red one-ish, orangey, reddy sort of colour. Uh, this is quite a new box of them. Uh, I think I started with 30 and I've no idea how many there are now because as I say, they all hide. They're all under the moss. Uh, they're all buried. But you do see some popping around the tops. But that is Amadalidium Vulgar St. Lucia. Not got much to say. Uh, they're eating right wood, bits of leaves. I need to top this up with leaves really, really badly. Um, and yeah, cool species. Which one's next? Okay, I'm back to doing two at a time because this is going to be a really long video. And these are two very basic species. These are something you will see uh, often and very cheap. This, of course, is the Priscilla Ravis Dairy Cow, which I'm sure you all know the Dairy Cow. Let me just press this button. Maybe this button. Down there, everything went weird, so I had to reset everything. Uh, yep, this is the Dairy Cow. Now, can you see them little things that stick out the back? They're called Uropods, and that's U R. Oh, not EU. We don't like those. And if they got really long ones, then they're males. And really short ones and almost invisible, like that one running away, is female. So, it's a good way of telling these guys. These are really cute. They've all buggered off. 
Oh, I can't see the side, and really don't like the light, so I'm just going to turn that over there, I'll run on to the side. And we've got another staple, uh, which is, let me just move over here, and move the camera rather than the box, duh. Uh, this is Pacelio Mavis Orange, who really hate the light, and I'm trying not to make them fall in the other box, because that would not be good. And these are quite a chunky ice pod, actually. And they're very fast and they're vanishing. Uh, but yeah, there's tons of them in here. You can, you can start with uh, just a few and end up with absolutely thousands. They are really, really prolific. Both of these are prolific. And they're both great cleanup crews. But do not keep them with other bugs. Do not keep them with like tarantulas or with mantis, etc because they will eat them when they molt uh, and nibble on them and then they get infected and die. So yeah, same method. I've got a nice dry piece of bark across the damp area and the dry area. So damp, dry, damp, dry, simple as that. And if I could find my spray bottle, here it is. I'm just gonna give this a bit of a whoosh. Now they all still need uh, calcium, so Keep that in there, keep that in mind. And uh, yeah, that's them too. Okay, so I just realized how much I can actually talk and I only did 10 species there. So what I'm gonna do is a part two, maybe tomorrow or Friday, I keep forgetting what day it is. So for now, I hope those 10 species kept you going and I will do another 10 tomorrow or maybe 15, I don't know. Um, and yeah, I'll see you then. Hopefully you'll come back and watch that and I'll try not to make it three hours long. So, see you next time. Bye bye.